Hey, everybody. Welcome to this private session that I'm getting ready to do with Torrente from Affirmation Station. And we are going to be working on boundaries in a way. Now, if you listen to her podcast episode, and I hope you did, if you didn't, you need to go listen to that first so that you have a basis for some of this. Part of what we talked about on the episode was how difficult it can be for people with high functioning anxiety to rest. And while that's not the exact thing that we're tapping on, it can also be really difficult for people with high functioning anxiety to create and stick to boundaries. And that is what we're going to be tying into in this session today. So Trente, tell me a little bit about the issues that you have with holding boundaries or the feelings that come up when you do. So for me, I can say when it comes to holding boundaries, I say my pullout game is strong because it is, but the emotions that are tied to that are great. And the, the amount of love that feels like it's being displaced is there. The grieving process happens. The anger happens. The worry of, did I do the right thing? Am I being mean or am I actually taking care of myself? What does that really look like? And through the setting of boundaries and then holding the boundaries, it feels like um, not enoughness. It feels like the fear of abandonment. It feels like the, um, the fear of rejection at the exact same time and the fear of not belonging. And by that, that means I'm no longer valuable. And so that's what I can say when it comes to boundaries. That's, that, you've summed that up beautifully. That's, <laughs> have you done therapy? I have multiple <laughs> times. And I researched a lot. Because you just processed all of that at a very high level in like 30 seconds. So <laughs> that was beautiful. So what are some, what's an example of a boundary that you have a hard time keeping? Um, a hard time. Ooh. Or that you get upset when you do. Um, for me, I can honestly say helping those that don't want to be helped no more. I have a propensity to, that's where I think it's the over people pleasing and realizing, no, they can please themselves. They don't need me. And I'm fine with that. I just have to learn to accept that. Um, and then stay away. Okay. So you have a tendency to people please? Yes, I do. <laughs> okay. And do you identify with that being a form of self-abandonment? Um, I would say yes, because I would, I literally conform myself to fit the mold that they're prescribing with the expectations that they have set, not the ones that I have. Cool. If I could like wave a magic wand and you could show up just the way that you want to in these situations with these boundaries and, you know, with not people pleasing all the time, what would that look like or feel like to you? What would be different? Honestly, when I make the decision to remove myself, it's not, it feels peaceful the entire time. It's not the feeling of I'm not going to belong. It's not the, none of those feelings. It's feeling like I have the confidence and the courage to do what I set, said and need it to do. And everything that I did is perfect in and of itself. And with that perfection, it is peaceful within that perfection. Yeah, beautiful. When you think about the, the anger and the other difficult, challenging feelings that come up around boundaries, how activated do you get? Like on a scale of zero, where zero is like, I'm totally at peace with it, I don't have any problems with this, and 10 is just like really agitated or angry, where do you feel like you fall on that scale? Oh, I'm a five. It depends on the person. It really sure. does. It depends. On, it, it depends on the person because each situation can get me to anger or it can get me to super annoyance or it can get me to, you know what? That's not for me to say anything. I have to let them have their own journey. Yeah. Okay. And it's difficult sometimes with certain things like this with we're getting ready to do a round of EFT, obviously. And if we were in the middle of something, like if you were currently going through a boundary issue, we could probably assess it a little bit differently than when you're just kind of thinking like a, an overview of different issues that you've had or might anticipate having. But the difference that we can anticipate seeing by doing this round of EFT is that perhaps the next time one of these issues arises, 
you show up to it a little bit differently. And that's really kind of the value I see in peeling back these layers and doing rounds of EFT like this versus, you know, we could work on something that's totally tangible, like a physical pain, a headache, a backache, something like that. And you'd know right away that it's changed. But when we work on things that are rooted more in our beliefs about things, we have to be faced with that challenge again before we see how much change we've actually made. So just keep that in mind when we reassess afterwards and maybe take note next time that you feel a little bit triggered by by something related to your boundaries if you feel a little bit differently about it. So what we're going to do from here is we're just going to do a round of tapping. It's going to be like follow the leader. I'm going to start on the side of the hand. Either hand is fine. And we're going to go through just the main tapping points. And I will be saying something. You'll be repeating it back. And you know, if for some reason what I'm saying doesn't feel true or aligned, I definitely want you to change it. I am pretty good at listening and gathering information, but I am not a mind reader. So <laughs> I don't always get it right. And EFT does favor specificity. So want to make sure that we, we get this right for you. So you ready? Oh, I think you've frozen. Oh, are you there? You're on mute. Am I back? You're back. Okay. We can edit that Sorry. part out. Are you ready? I am ready. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> so we're going to start on the side of the hand. I always like to say, just take a nice deep breath. Sit and know that you're sitting. Feel the chair underneath of you. And for those of you that are tapping along, I want you to bring to top of mind whatever issues you might have around your own boundaries and then personalize this a little bit as you tap through it. Even though I can get pretty angry when I don't hold my boundaries. Even though I can get pretty angry when I don't hold my boundaries. I want to love, accept, and forgive myself. I want to love, accept, and forgive myself. Even though I worry so much about what the other is thinking about me. Even though I worry so much about what the other's thinking about me. When I have a boundary to hold. When I have a boundary to hold. I honor these feelings and accept myself anyway. I honor these feelings and accept myself anyway. And even though the feelings can be challenging. And even though the feelings can be challenging. I feel rejected, abandoned. I feel rejected and abandoned. Sometimes just annoyed and angry. Sometimes just annoyed and angry. I'm open to the idea that I could show up in a whole new way. I'm open to the idea that I could show up in a whole new way. All this anger and annoyance around boundaries. All this anger and annoyance around boundaries. I can be really reactive when I want to be responsive. I can be really reactive when I want to be responsive. And sometimes I wonder if I'm being mean. And sometimes I wonder if I'm being mean. Sometimes it feels like love has been displaced. Sometimes it feels like love has been displaced. And I can go in this downward spiral of feeling like I'm not enough. And I can go into this downward spiral where I feel like I'm not enough. Feeling like I don't belong. Feeling like I don't belong. But knowing that my boundaries support my self-care. Knowing that my boundaries support my self-care. So it can be really confusing because I want to please people. It can be really confusing because I want to please people. But it can feel impossible to please myself and please others too. It can feel impossible to please myself and please others too. Kind of like there's no middle ground. Kind of like there's no middle ground. All this people pleasing. All this people pleasing. This feeling that I've abandoned myself. This feeling that I have abandoned myself. 
that I'm just trying to fit into the mold of what they want me to be. Just trying to fit into the mold of what they want. And that means that instead of peacefully holding a boundary. And that means instead of peacefully holding a boundary. I end up feeling annoyed and angry and uncertain. I feel angry and uncertain. And I worry about being rejected. And I worry about being rejected. And none of that serves the purpose of my boundaries. And none of that serves the purpose of my boundaries. Because I'm looking for my boundaries to create peace inside of me. And um, because I'm looking for boundaries to create peace inside of me. And to allow me to take better care of myself. And to allow me to take better care of myself. And while I may be really good at holding my boundaries. And while I may be really good at holding my boundaries. I still have thoughts that don't align with them. I still have thoughts that don't align with them. Clearing all this misalignment down to a cellular level. Clearing all this misalignment down to a cellular level. And opening up to the idea that there's nothing wrong with my boundaries. And opening up to the idea that there is nothing wrong with my boundaries. I can make them and feel peaceful. I can make them and feel peaceful. I belong and I have the confidence to follow through. I belong and I have the confidence to follow through. Now we're gonna tap on the sides of the fingers with love with love with love sorry <laughs> acceptance acceptance tolerance tolerance and forgiveness and forgiveness i call my power back into my body i call my power back into my body Back of the hand between your ring finger and your pinky. I am whole, complete, and powerful. I am whole, complete, and powerful. And my boundaries support my inner peace and my personal growth. And my boundaries support my inner peace and my personal growth. Take a nice deep inhale through your nose, Trente. And an exhale out through the mouth. And just tell me what came up for you as we did that. A lot of circumstances that I've been going through recently with my boundaries and people uh, and grieving of those situations. Um, also, what came up for me was this is what I teach people and this is what they feel. Oh, my God, this feels amazing. I also had that thought that came up, too. That's a good one. Uh, another one was is that. That armpit one really does look awkward, as I feel like it does. And that's just a personal thing. It does. Um, that's like, like I said, these are just random Charente having side <laughs> intrusive thoughts. Um, and I can say I feel more at peace because I did have a situation yesterday um, where that happened. And I, and I also, for me, felt like I broke someone's confidence. And they're like, no, you didn't. You didn't do anything wrong. And I was like, but I was overthinking that I did. And I wanted to beg for forgiveness, even though I know that that wasn't a hundred percent needed. Yeah. So that came up as well. Um, and I, so I feel really good right now. So that's good. Fun. I don't know what I'm about to do with all this energy. That's how good I feel. That's I'm like, that's what good. am I about to you do? <laughs> wonderful awareness or, and consciousness around all of it. That's beautiful to hear you processing that and to hear all of those thoughts that, that we're going through. And for any of you who are tapping along with us, think about those things yourself too. Maybe write them down and then let's revisit that number. Where do you feel like you are on a scale of one of zero to 10 now with, you know, your feelings around boundaries? Um, favor. I don't remember a zero and I don't remember a 10. 
what is the scale? Of one Zero one? is you're all good. There's no problems. And 10 is like totally angry and agitated. Right now I'm at a zero. That's why I'm excited. That's why I'm like, this was nice. That's, that's <laughs> always the goal, you know? When when you get things down to a zero, then that's that's good news. And if for those of you who have tapped along with us and don't find yourself at a zero, that's totally okay too. Sometimes people go from a 10 to a nine. Sometimes people go from a seven to a three. There's no right or wrong thing there. Um, the hope is that you've moved somewhere in the direction from a higher number to a lower number. And then it's a matter of looking at what's left and then tapping another round on that so that you can get yourself closer to that zero where you're going to feel as energetic and awesome as Charente feels right now. And I always love to hear from people when you do these rounds. So if you've tapped out this round with us and experienced something worth sharing, please hit me up on Instagram, send me a DM over there at Teresa Lear Levine. And I would love to hear from you. Do you like hearing from people too? You feel free to give an email or a social. Yeah. Um, sorry. I'm like, I'm just so here and present. I'm like, hi, my name is Charente. So, um, <laughs> people can reach out to me at Charente Car on Instagram or go to charentecar.com. C H A R E N T E C A R R. Beautiful. Well, thank you for trusting me to guide you through this today, Charente. I appreciate it. And for all of you who tapped along with us, thank you as well. Thank you so much. <laughs>